Hi, Excel Mac users. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Pareto chart. Now, Pareto chart is also kind of known as an 80-20 chart, or it's based on the concept of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. And this was named after a Italian economist, Vilfredo Pareto. And it is basically a combination chart. You can see that it's a column chart and also a line chart and it's uh, represented by the descending order of the columns and a cumulative or ascending order of the line chart. And usually the column chart is represented in units, uh, whole numbers uh, usually, and the line chart portion is represented in percentages. Now the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule basically it was one of those guidelines or heuristics that was kind of easily used to define uh, a population and its effect on something. So this is something that you can do in Excel, uh, create this type of chart. And there's actually a couple things that we need to talk about when we're creating something because we've got uh, numerical data, which is quantitative data that we can base the chart off or categorical data. Now numerical data can be expressed in numbers and they're either discrete numbers like integers or continuous numbers. So an example of a discrete number, there's number of family members, there's there's not going to be 1.5 family members, there's 1, 2, 3, or 4, or etc. And an example of continuous numbers are like temperature, it could be 98.6 or 98.6746, whatever, whatever. Now category, categorical or qualitative uh, data is expressed in a category. This could be nominal or ordinal. So examples of a nominal um, data is the gender. You could either be male or female. So you're going to have to categorize it and then count it to uh, kind of put a number onto it. Ordinal data is uh, something like the ratings. Uh, excellent, good, average, bad. You also have to count that in order to finally put a number on the count and put a Pareto to that. So let's see how we can uh, do this. I have one example for numerical and one example for categorical. And if you don't have Excel uh, 2016 on the Mac, which has the capability to do this fairly easily, I'll show you an example of how to do it without that easy to create chart. Let's go with the numerical example first. So we have this bunch of numerical data. We have our items and we have our revenue. So we want to see which are the items that are accounting for maybe 20% of all the, the revenue. All I need to do in this particular case is select anywhere in this table, go to insert, and we have our chart here, and we have our histogram, and this is the histogram Pareto. You can see it created that pretty easily, right? It even ranked it for us. Item two and item four are, or and even item seven, are the ones that had the highest revenue. We can see that it's a descending bar chart here, or column chart here, and we have our line that indicates um, the cumulatively where the 80% kind of uh, met with the particular items. You can see one, two, three, probably up to item three we have our 80%. So that gives you kind of a nice visual representation of the Pareto principle. Right? We have three of the four items that are probably 80% of the revenue. Now with categorical data, we're going to have to do it a little bit differently. In this example, what we probably need to do is get into a format where we're going to count this and then use that particular table off of, off of our counts to create the chart. The easiest way to do this is turn this into a pivot table. Go to insert and pivot table. It selected the range that I'm in because this is a table. I'm going to put it into the existing worksheet. I'll just choose this cell here, D9. Click OK. and I'm going to bring in my description here into the rows and now bring in the description here into the values row where it's going to count it. So it makes you can see it says count of description. By default, if the if Excel sees the field and in those fields there's not any numbers, it's going to count it. If there if these fields had numbers, it would sum it. So that's the way that Excel works usually. I'm going to have to bring this table into another range of cells because as you can see here if I go to insert and I want to insert a chart it says I can't because it can't do it within the pivot table. What I can do let's change a little bit of the table here go to design 
first I'm going to show it in table format so I can get the, des the uh, descriptions here in the count. I kind of like to do that because it gives me a, a view of what uh, I, I'm, my row headings are actually are. I just need to take this, I don't need to take the grand total, control C to copy, bring it over here and just paste it as values. I don't want to paste the table formatting or anything else. I just want to paste the values there. Double click this to auto fit. And once that's done, I can now create the chart. Go to insert and go to histogram and this Pareto chart. It's going to create that Pareto chart for me now. And I've got this nice Pareto chart. My food quality and my service are here. Right? So it says about 80% here. We're around 80% here. These three items, this is probably a survey, account for most of the survey results probably for a restaurant, right? So what if we didn't have Excel 2016 and we didn't have the option to create a Pareto? We didn't have this option here. What we can do is we can do it manually. It's not that bad. I'm going to go into this older Excel tab here and we have our table from our previous tab here. All I need to do now is first sort this. I need to sort this in descending order. Go under home and where we have sort. Let's do a custom sort. I want to sort by revenue. I, my list does have headers, so let's sort by revenue. And that will be largest to smallest. Click OK. And now it's sorted everything largest to smallest. I need to sum it up here because I need a value for it to sum. So I'll just type, uh, let's see, I have auto sum here. I'll do sum. And Excel smartly selects B2 to B12 as a sum. Press return. That's my total. This column, I need to have a cumulative revenue. So I'll just do cumulative rev. This first cell is going to be here, this cell, B2. The next cell is going to be this revenue plus the previous one above. Press enter. It becomes cumulative. Click the fill handle and drag it down so the formula gets dragged down. You can see here this total equals that one, right? Because that's cumulative. It's adding up everything together and those totals are going to match. Now here I need to put the percentage. Percentage. And it's going to be this value divided by that total. And that total needs to always stay static, B13. C2, when we drag this down, it's going to become uh, C3, C4, C5, but B13 needs to stay static. So I'll put in, I'll press F4 to make that a absolute cell reference. You see the dollar sign in front of it. Press return. We have that as a percentage. Let's make that a percentage here. Drag the fill handle down, or let's see. I double click the fill handle. Let's see if that works. Yep, that copies everything down. And you can see we've got our percentages. Now, what I can do is go to insert and insert a column chart. I'll just insert the, this initial 2D column chart. And it looks kind of like not right, right? Because I've got all three sets of data here. I'm going to get rid of that cumulative column. So I'll go to select data and my cumulative revenue. I don't need that. So we will remove that minus. All right, so that disappears. Click OK. And that's gone. Oh, there's something wrong here too. It looks like it picked up that last row. So go into select data and we're going to go under items. Let's see what it picked up. Yeah, we didn't need it to pick up A13, A12. And for my revenue, let's see what it did too. Let's make sure it didn't pick up yeah, let's say A12. That's all we wanted. And let's make sure percentage didn't pick up A13. Yeah, just in case. We want to keep it clean. So we're going to change that to 12. Press return. All right, click OK. So now we've got our revenue in this nice bar, this descending bar. But we don't have our percentage. It is there. But since our revenues are so high, you can't see it. It's really, it's really like somewhere down there. We need to put this on a secondary axis. I mentioned before we have our percentages on the right side, so we need to put it on the secondary axis. What we can do if we want to select it is click on that and press tab. 
it's going to select that. It's way down there. Or another way to select it is go into Format. And let's say we selected this. You see that the series revenue selects revenue. What we can do is click that drop down and select the series percentage. And now that's selected. What we need to do is change this from a column chart into a line chart. So go into Chart Design, go to Change Chart Type, and let's make this a line chart. And it turned into a line chart, but still it's right down there. And what we need to do is make that on a secondary axis. So what we can do is select our series there. Make sure it's selected. I think that's the one that is selected, series. We can right click or and go to Format Data Series, or we can go to the Format pane here. I'll click on that. And we want to plot the series on a secondary axis. So once we do that, we have our secondary axis here. It's going to plot it correctly, right? And we don't really have anything going over 120%, uh, right? Right? We only have up to 100%. So let's make that our maximum. Select on the axis there, and go under the axis options, and our maximum should just be 100 or 1. Point zero tab and we're going to have it at 100 percent now one thing that i also had to do have to do because once when we had excel kind of select the data to put into the chart it added the items as a series but that actually should probably be the horizontal uh, axis go under chart design let's select our data my horizontal axis labels should not should be this. I'm just, just going to select that and delete that. All right, so now I'm going to select my horizontal axis labels. It's going to be here. Press and return or enter, click OK, and we should have our horizontal, right? We have item 2, which is 7535. Let's look at item 9. Is that correct? 618. That is right. So that's the way that we can create a Pareto chart if we did not have Excel 2016 and had that nice feature where we can insert a Pareto histogram. If you had previous versions of Excel, you might not have this available for you, but it's not that hard to create it. All you need to do is have a return, cumulative return column, make percentages out of that, and just put those two columns, like this, these two columns, revenue and percentage, in there as a combination chart. This is a combination chart. It's got two chart types, a column chart and a line chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.